What is up, Soul Fam? This is Chris here with Soldier of Life. And today, really what I wanted to just talk about was um, one of the, like, the most powerful phrase that has I've used for myself to basically catapult myself into the life that I wanted to create for myself. So I'm not just saying life, like I had this life altering, you know, moment where everything changed for me. But basically the phrase that I've been using in order to get out of my own mind, get out of my own frame of mind, and basically have like a soldier's mindset to like stop making so many excuses, stop giving yourself out and out, you know, stop giving yourself a way to fail or to not produce the product that you want to produce, not be the person that you want to be, you know, and then later on, you'll just make a bunch of um, excuses why you didn't do it or blame the situation or external factors. So um, um, the basis of the story, um, when I first started, uh, when I shout out saying that I want to, you know, try to be digital nomad, I want to travel, you know, um, I did all these things. I always had like, I always had like a side hustle, if you will, right? So like, um, just growing up, I was a part-time mechanic, uh, I was a rapper, I was a DJ, I um, sold, um, I sold, uh, uh, what is it? I sold um, graphic templates, like I used to make flyers, I sold graphic templates uh, online, I was a co-op promoter, I was a lot of different things, I built a car, I've done a lot of different things. You know, and, but it was always something I would do on the side. And I personally, I like the grind, I like the hustle. But when I figured for myself, for my own personality content, because a lot of other people, they can do things that I can't and vice versa. You know, we all have our own abilities. But I personally am not good at doing things on the side and not pushing all the way through, right? So I have a history of doing things and getting decent in it and getting, you know, somewhat notoriety for it. But then after a while, one day I'll just be like, you know what, like I quit and I don't wanna do it anymore. So even like my first stint when I started doing YouTube, I did YouTube like 10 something years ago, you know, and it was me and my cousin and I hope he sees this video. <laughs> but it was me and my cousin, we did like, um, we did music videos. We did like, we were doing uh, rap music videos or whatever. So I came up to him like, I wanted to start like um, like a funny channel with, you know, two black dudes in the hood, you know, and we'd be like doing pranks on people and stuff like that. And like I said, this is 10 years ago. So YouTube was like in its infancy, you know, like there was no Logan Paul. There weren't big YouTube creators. There weren't like slideshow, like, like all this extreme content, you know, it was like in the infancy stages. Nobody really honed in you on YouTube like that. But people were sharing videos, you know, still. People were showing their content. People were making music videos there, and that's where most people started seeing their videos. So, um, like I said, it was like 10 something years ago. And 10 plus years ago, I think. And we did it, you know, and I had one music video. And at the time, like, to me, I was booming, right? So I had like 30,000 views within, I wanna say a month, but, that was that was before like SEO and all this stuff, but um, that was like my highlight. So I was just so excited for that. But after this video, only because when I was rapping and I was pre I, I wanted to be a rapper, so I started rapping. Then I figured out that I have to have beats. I have to have my own music. I didn't have the money to pay for people to make my music, so I started uh, making my own music. So I had to be a producer. Then once I did that, I figured out that I had to. Like the music that I made didn't sound like the the music that came from the you know high quality studios. Then I found out about mixing and mastering. So then I tried to mix and master. Then I found out about distribution that you know once I made the music, it's not even about making the music, but it's like delivery. It's about getting your message out there. It's about going to the streets and all those stuff. Da da da. So with all these facts, like I was trying to put on all these different hats, and it was really, it was really like stressful. You know why you're doing that with a full-time job, you know, with a girlfriend and getting some time, whatever. Da, da, da. So like, it was very stressful to do all these things and still manage, you know, to put all my effort into what I was doing. So I remember it was one defining point. I, I made this song. I love. It was a really nice song. I made it with a buddy of mine, and 
we were supposed to perform at the time. And like at the time there was a show going on and there were like some famous people that were like scouting out this new area to see new talent. So I told my buddy, hey, come with me up there. We're gonna do our song. Uh, we're gonna perform or whatever. I was the rapper, he was the singer. It was like a slower song. And um, we, we got there to the event and I'm super nervous. I've never performed in front of like a good amount of people, let alone like famous people. So I was in my head a little bit. So once, I think we were like two songs out, like with two people performing before us. So once it comes to time to, to perform, he's like, I don't wanna do the song. And I was like, what's the problem? You know, why don't you wanna do it? And then I was like, hey man, you know, look, like you do this one time, I know you're nervous, but we're gonna do it, we're gonna crush it, you know, and then maybe something happened, maybe if it doesn't, it doesn't, but you know, we're gonna tear it up. He said, I don't wanna do the song, basically he was like, I'm not doing it. So I had to change the song to a different song, my own song, then da 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 da. But that made me realize that, like, first of all, you can't really count on other people to help you or perform for you. You know, you basically, like, I don't have a problem with extending offers and stuff like that, but not to trail off the subject, but I, that's when I started finding out, okay, I have to start doing things on my own. So that's when I, oh, I, I never ask people for help. If I want to do this, I'll figure out how to do it, da 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 da. But the problem with that is once I put on too many hats, I get frustrated, I don't want to do anymore. So when you're talking about with uh, my music, when I did my music thing, like my music career, it didn't last long because I was just tired of making songs and being out there by myself, putting out my own music. You know, I didn't want to count on anybody because I didn't want anybody to let me down. So I just got so stressed out of doing it. And I was just like, this is not what I do anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So what I did this time around, um, when I came to um, when I started back on YouTube and I created my own content, you know, I did a lot of different things for um, digital entrepreneurship, like drop shipping and selling products online and stuff like that. Like, I still do a little bit of it. But when it came to this, um, what I'm doing now, I had to tell myself, you know, I know you might have heard the phrase like fake until you make it. And, but I'm a big word association guy. So the part of fake it until you make it, I don't like the word fake. You know, I, use, I like to use positive tonality in all my words and sentences. So fake it until you make it. The word fake is already implied that something within the sentence is fake. And then also until is like you're waiting for something, you know, until that moment. And I think a lot of people live, you know, I'm going to be happy when I won't be happy until, you know, and that frame of mind that I started thinking, I don't really think like that anymore. So I try to be happy daily you know i try to wake up in a happy groot mood every day i try to spread love to people you know da, 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 da. but i don't i'm not waiting until my youtube channel gets this many subscribers i'll be happy until i make this much amount of money you know then i'll be satisfied until i find the beautiful person to spend the rest of my life with that's when i'll be happy i don't wait for that stuff anymore you know i live like daily with plain goals but the phrase that I started to use that made me do the things out of my comfort zone, but made me, it also shaped me to be the person I want to be is, well, it's two of them actually, but on this occasion, I'm going to tell you, it's, um, this is what I do, right? This is what I do. So if I'm doing something, let's say there was one time I wanted to shoot outside. I wanted to get some film, get some more content. And I just wanted to, you know, shoot my interactions with different people because I'm, I'm speaking to, well, this year I'm going to be doing my social savage year where I talk to 10,000 people or whatever. But um, I was nervous to, you know, ask people for um, um, interviews. I was nervous to go up to people and talk to them, you know, random people that I didn't know. I was afraid to, you know, oh my God, what if, what if I start this and it doesn't work? You know, I'm doing a vlog or something. What if people see me while I'm vlogging? Or what if I travel somewhere and, you know, I'm not making it or whatever, if I'm trying to make an online business and it doesn't work out. I, when I started having all these negative connotations about myself and thinking that it won't work, that I won't, I won't get what I want and won't happen. I started, when I started doing the actions, I'd be going through it and thinking that in my head, I would tell myself, no, this is what you do. This is what you do. And the reason I say that is because within the, within the sentence, this, you know, basically this is showing you. So if you're talking about that over there, that's not in my control, that's something, you know, far away. Um, am I, you know, if you're talking about possessions, you know, that's my car. 
Okay, cool, but when you're talking about this, this here is here, it's now, it's in your face. You know, this is basically a lot of things with this possession is not just a law. This is what I have control over. So this is what I do. Another, and is, you know, is is also present. So you're talking about this is, what I'm doing now is mine. This is what I do. And just, yeah, the end of the sentence, this is what I do. You know, it's what I do. I don't do anything else. I might do a lot of other things, but this here is what I do. This is my specialty. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm great at. You know, and um, it's, it's scary, man, when you're doing things that you're not, that you don't have confidence in doing, when you've never done it before, when you haven't been somewhere or um, experienced something before. It's scary doing it for the first time. You know, me personally, I had to look within myself. I was just scared of uh, my own success doing things. But I think that that was my own deterrent to stop me from actually pursuing something 100%. And I told all my buddies, I was like, look, man, like, I like doing what I'm doing, but I don't feel like I can get the best out of it unless I'm going 100, you know, so I'm, I'm not doing things this part time. I'm not doing this on the side. I personally, I don't operate like that. So I just started doing it full time. But the days I would get in my head, you know, another thing with being a digital nomad, it's hard when you, you kind of only make your own hours. But yeah, 80% of the people that try to be a digital nomad, they end up failing because they don't have a strong background to rely on. They haven't worked for themselves um, or they haven't created a strong enough work ethic to where you have the ability to work and grind it out and you can put in place your own um, plans and your own attack plan and stuff like that. So I was really nervous to be working for myself to try to be a digital entrepreneur, but I had to start telling myself, this is what I do. You know, so the late nights, the early mornings that I do have, um, the ability to go in to talk to people that I haven't talked to before, the ability to face rejection on a level in which I'm not really accustomed to. But you know, if it's pursuing something that is a positive, that can be a positive outcome for me, then I have to, t that's what I started telling myself. This is what I do. You know, if I'm going up, you know, um, I had a talk with, um, I'm not gonna say a client, he's not a client yet, but a friend of mine um, the other day, um, he was going out and he wanted to talk to somebody and I was just coaching him a little bit on what he should do. And he was kind of, you know, nervous, you know, this is not who I am, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, I told him, like, you have to be the person you wanna be. Don't wait around to be that person. Be the person you wanna be now. If you started acting like that and thinking like that daily, next thing you know, you'll be that person on autopilot. You know, nobody is better than you. Nobody is doing something that's more grand than what you are. They just have the automation and the skills that what they're doing and they just do it daily now. They don't think about what they're doing. You know, you can be awesome, but you have to be awesome daily. And that's the thing, if you're not congruent with the things that you're saying, the things that you're doing, your actions, if you're, they're not congruent with your values, it's not gonna happen. So what I was, just like I said, what I did, you know, this is what I do. So if I'm doing something and I personally don't, I was like, oh, that feels kind of weird, you know, um, um, going in this situation, you know, holding it, just for my situation, putting this camera to my face, working all day at the, at the coffee shop or whatever, or, you know, asking somebody in a weird, in a weird manner where it feels awkward. This is what I wanna do, this is what I do. You know, I told myself that I'm going to take this on full time. This is what I do. There's no second other thing that I'm pretty good at. This is what I do. Soldier of Life, my own personal brand, my thing. This is what I do. And there's not going to be any deterrent way for me to live because I've embraced, you know, what I will be doing. So that's really one of what I wanted to share with you guys today. Jeez, that was a pretty long, I don't know if it was long or not. I don't know. I suck at these. But I do, although I suck at them, this is what I do. So you see how they came full circle. But um, I appreciate you guys listening. Um, don't forget, stay happy, stay healthy, stay motivated. And don't forget, in order to change the world, you got to tell them this is what success looks like. Build your own success brand. All right. But this is Chris with Soldier Life. Like I said, I appreciate you guys watching. And I will see you in the next video.